Greetings, everyone. I'm the Chancellor Soul Mike Boone, and you're tuned in to Soul Facts, a show highlighting the history of legendary artists and their music. In this edition, we feature one of the most gifted, influential singer songwriter whose worldwide composition helped shape the foundation of rock and roll. Mr. Otis Blackwell. Born on February 16, 1932 in Brooklyn, New York, Blackwell grew up listening to R&B and country music and studied piano as a child. He later won an amateur night contest at the world famous Apollo Theater in 1952 and secured a recording contract with Joe Davis's JD label. There he composed and released Daddy Rolling Stone, his second for the label, but failed the chart. The tune was a popular hit in Jamaica, where later it was recorded by R&B star Derek Martin in the mid 60s. Blackwell made recordings also on the Groove label and RCA Records. He then sold his demo of various songs he wrote to various labels, including RCA, including one that featured singing over a piano and cardboard box. Don't be cruel. He later teamed up with another songwriter, Eddie Cooley, and penned his first million selling masterpiece of 1956. Fever. Originally recorded by R.B. Great, Little Willie John on King Records, later covered by jazz singer Peggy Lee. Legend has it is that R.B. Great Joe Tex wrote Fever originally as a poem and later sold it to Eddie Cooley for $50 to pay his unpaid hotel bill at Harlem's Teresa Hotel where he was staying. Of course, after the song sold a million, Joe later regretted his sale and recorded an answer song on King Records called Pneumonia. Now because of his contractual dispute with Joe Davis, Blackwell wrote under his stepfather's name, John Davenport. You see, Otis felt that if his publishing went through Davis's company, he wouldn't see any of the royalties. Right now, I'd like to share with you his first million selling composition recorded by the great Lou Willie John on King Records. That has continued to be a classic to this day. Fever. <laughs> Get a feeling that's so hard to bear You give me fever When you kiss me Fever when you hold me tight Fever in the morning Fever all through the night Listen to me, baby Hear every word I say They don't know how to love you my way You give me fever When you kiss me Fever when you hold me tight Fever in the morning And fever all through the night Bless my soul, I love you Take this heart away Say you give me fever When you kiss me Fever when you hold me tight I know you're gonna 
treat me right You give me fever When you kiss me Fever when you hold me tight Fever all in the morning And fever all through the night Classic R&B hit of 1956, Fever by Little Willie John on King Records. Around this time in 1956, RCA promotion man Steve Scholes played a demo for Elvis Presley while sipping coffee at a coffee shop and told him that Otis Blackwell had composed it. Presley was a fan of Otis's work as an artist and songwriter so he listened to the demo and learned the song within minutes. The song, of course, was Don't Be Cruel, which was featured as the A-side of another R&B cover, Big Mama Thornton's 1953 classic hit, Hound Dog. Don't Be Cruel provided Elvis with his third gold record and stayed in the number one position for an astonishing 11 weeks on Billboard's pop singles chart during the late summer of 1956. Blackwell composed yet another masterpiece, All Shook Up, inspired by his publisher Goldie Gohawk, who had shaken a bottle of Pepsi and in teasing, told him to write a song about that since Otis can write about anything. Huh. <laughs> Within minutes, Blackwell composed the song. Originally recorded by David Hill as a rockabilly, Presley got a hold of it and wasn't quite satisfied with the lyrics. Otis rewrote the lyrics, where it provided Elvis with his ninth gold record. Elvis Presley was listed as a co-writer of the song, though he never written any piece of music whatsoever. It was an unfair practice of Colonel Tom Parker, Elvis's manager, that in demand, Elvis should be listed as a songwriter so he would receive a share of the royalties. Huh. Very unfair for Otis as well, but that was part of the deal. So he had to go along with it. Otis Blackwell's prolific writing earned more than a thousand compositions including classics such as Great Balls of Fire and Breathless for Jerry Lee Lewis, Hey Little Girl for D. Clark, Handyman for Jimmy Jones, and more for Elvis Presley, including Return to Cinder, featured in his 1962 hit movie Girls, Girls, Girls. Paralyzed. One Broken Heart for Sale, featured in Elvis's 1963 movie, It Happened at the World's Fair. And another classic, Such an Easy Question. Blackwell penned songs gurning worldwide sales over 200 million. During his vocal years, he recorded for various labels such as MGM, Epic, and Atlantic, and made occasional live appearances in various clubs whenever he felt like it. He made a comeback LP in 1976. These are my songs on the Inner City label. He also made recordings tributing Elvis Presley when Presley died in August of 1977. Otis Blackwell was inducted into the National Academy of Popular Music Songwriters Hall of Fame in 1991, the National Songwriters Hall of Fame in 1996, and in 2010 was a recipient of the Armand Antigone Award in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Otis came down with a stroke and was paralyzed. In 1991, 
He died at the age of 70 on May 6, 2002 in Nashville, Tennessee. Otis Blackwell, the unsung songwriting hero of R&B, whose gifted contribution helped lay the foundation of what's become known as rock and roll. His legacy will continue to live through the spirit of his songs. I'm the Chancellor of Soul. Soul Facts, a show created, written, produced, and copywritten by the Chancellor Soul, Mike Boone.